This is Cruise Control. Control. Your on-air automotive magazine with co-hosts Fred Staub and Les Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news. We'll fix or repair your car on the air. air. Control. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin. Control. Because you're on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. That's right. It has begun. Welcome to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. It's that time again to head out on the road and check out what's going on. New models, performance, stuff you never heard of, stuff we make up. No, that's not true. Yep. We don't. Wait. <laughs> I'm Fred Staub. <laughs> he is none other than Les Jackson, and we are glad you are along for the Present. ride. We've got a lot to talk about, Les new vehicles one of them is from genesis genesis of course hitting uh a hundred every time they uh bring out yep. a new vehicle and this time it is the all electric or as they say electrified gv70 cuv the gv70 uh is just a great vehicle so we're going to talk about that a lot aren't we absolutely and the picture you have there is shows a white or close to white interior which i love i realize they're ridiculously impractical but i yeah. love them anyway ford uh hits the trail for some van life with its transit trail transit van trail yep that's all, cool all wheel drive uh ready to be upfitted and uh yep they're jumping into that market just like uh sprinter has done Yep. And uh, one CEO says what you and I have been talking about for a long time. Don't plan on buying a fully autonomous vehicle anytime soon. We'll tell you who that CEO is. And uh, yep. one big autonomous company, a driving company, just shut down, Argo. We'll tell you about that. They shut down this week. Yeah, that's right. And uh, don't let any, any um, automotive people say that they're fully autonomous <laughs> uh, they shall remain elon musk <laughs> we told you mini was bringing back the manual transmission well they are and now they're opening a school to show you how in fred's words to row your own gears <laughs> is if we come to this yeah where we have to send people to school to Pete, drive a manual i'm gonna open a, a school for people to sharpen pencils what do you think I, i'll invest in that <laughs> all right well <laughs> well dodge uh is giving us more details on their incredible electric vehicle uh performance vehicle that they're bringing out uh they showed it off at sema the next version of it it's red which is good for a perf it's performance red. vehicle and we're also getting some ideas about stages and the direct connection name is back remember the direct connection yeah and there's different like stages of the vehicle also if you still want to use your internal combustion engine they have a couple of crate engines uh, one uh, mm -hmm. is uh, they have versions of the Hemi uh, that are in put out incredible horsepower numbers. They also have a six-cylinder twin turbocharged Huracrate engine. We'll talk about Let's... that and more when we come back on Cruise Control. Also going to have an at-the-wheel review of the Hyundai Sonata Hybrid. So stay tuned. We got so much to get to. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. This is your on-air automotive magazine. Fred and I have been busy this week. And um, one of the things that I wish <laughs> I had added to the week, but I didn't have the chance, was to get into the Genesis 
uh, GV70 electric CUV because you just know it's good. Yeah, you do. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, I was in the GV60, which is sort of a purpose-built vehicle, electric vehicle. And this is just kind of working off of their existing platform. It You really can't tell it's electric from the outside uh, from their uh, G70. And uh, it is it is just a beautiful vehicle. They really have a way of making these things look very high end, but you're not paying Mercedes prices. You know, you're not right. paying BMW prices, um, but you're getting all of the the high end looks. You're getting all of the high end design. You look at the interiors. Their interiors are amazing. Um, so. It uh, will be built in the U.S., and that's to take advantage, of course, of the uh, new laws where you can get the tax breaks if you build the vehicles in the U.S. Assembly will be in Montgomery, Alabama, which is a big milestone for Genesis. Uh, the first vehicles built here by Genesis in the U.S. And, uh, you know, it will be shown. It will make its... Uh, big public showing first public showing not a reveal because it's been revealed this week but its first public showing will happen november 18th through 27th at the los angeles auto show in wow. the convention center or whatever they just call it now mobility show <laughs> just days away just days away but uh you know it i guess you got to think about it do people still want a specific electric only vehicle or do they want to take a great internal combustion powered vehicle that exists already and get the electric version. Well, that's a, you know, I'm not sure I have a definitive answer for that. Could you I work on that and get back to me? <laughs> I'll work on that. I, it really, it really is up to the individual. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like the early days of the hybrid, you know, do you, do yeah. you uh, want the Prius that really is a, a hybrid only vehicle with a unique shape, or do you just want the Honda Civic hybrid that looks like the Civic, uh, but gets better mileage? Who knows? Who knows? Well, our next story is completely different than what we're talking about. You can't get more different <laughs> than the Genesis GV70 than going to the Ford Transit van. And Ford uh, is looking to take on Sprinter in the van life van business, all-wheel drive. It is an all-wheel drive Ford Transit, um, and uh, they call it the Transit Trail, and it's designed to be, uh, there's all kinds of wiring and uh, pre-setting pre for upfitters, van upfitters, people that want to build an interior uh, where you can make it sort of like a small motorhome, but you can carry things like mountain bikes or kayaks okay. or any of your active lifestyle gear less that I know you never go outside your house without. <clears throat> That's right. Well, I have the, the active inactive lifestyle. <laughs> um, You're I have actively a special inactive. wardrobe for it. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, but this is a great market if you think about it. Yeah. Uh, everybody's going to be in it another few years. You've got the entire baby boom generation retiring people uh, and everybody across the age groups just want to go out and, you know, and see the wilderness or see the, the forests. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we've seen an entry from Stellantis yet with their ProMaster. I'm not sure if there's an all wheel drive version of that. I, I'd have all to look. There is sure certainly there will be. Sprinter, uh, and I bet Ford Transit can beat the price of the Sprinter. Um, and, uh, you know, GM's going to have a new van as well. We don't know what that is yet. They still have the same old van that they had the Chevy Express for a long time. Uh, but let's talk about this vehicle. It's got the 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 engine, 310 horsepower, 400 pound feet of torque with a 10 speed auto. That's Intelligent all-wheel drive, five selectable mo selectable modes, including normal, eco, mud, and ruts. Don't you just love a good mud and ruts version? Uh, selectable drive mode, tow haul, and slippery, and 3.5 inch increased ride height, 
Seven five inch wider track, 30, 30 point five inch Goodyear Wrangler workhorse, all terrain tires. Those are pretty big, you know. That's like something you'd find on a Jeep, basically, isn't it? Well, yeah. Um, that's really, you know, uh, that's a a very very great um, departure from a typical transit van. Yeah, heavy duty trailer package up to sixty five hundred pounds of towing capacity which is great you think about that you tow snowmobiles or whatever behind you or if i think they call them snow machines up uh, up up north but uh, good deal the transit train trail from the folks over at ford transit trail all-wheel drive van when we come back we've got plenty more information we'll tell you why you won't be driving an autonomous car anytime soon stay tuned Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. Hey, we, uh, we're just rolling through all these things going on. The Ford Transit Trail is going to be a huge seller. Uh, we were talking about that. And what do you think? Another two years and every, <laughs> every company will have one of the same kind of thing? Yeah, I, th I think so. Uh, I You know, GM is the only one that doesn't have one right now. We, I, I mean, brands like Kia don't really have one right now. But uh, I, th I think, you know, I think this is a growing market. A lot of people like to live on the road, you know. They and sure do. Um, you can convert these things pretty well. I've seen some done really well, and I've seen some done with where it looks like two-by-fours hacked hacked yep. off with a dull saw <laughs> yep yep du duct tape and uh, gorilla glue i tell you what i would do i would build the uh, cabinets i'd use the angle aluminum pieces that you can get mm -hmm. and then just put lightweight yep. wood over them because you don't want to put too much weight into the cabinets they don't no no you, you you need to build it light yeah and i've seen some people go full-on plywood two by fours yeah and, uh, or your mdf or any yeah, of these other you know, heavy woods yeah but some have done great they put showers in them they do all kinds of things you know so cool stuff cool stuff um i think we'll probably see if they haven't done so already we'll probably see a promaster stellantis all-wheel drive model um and um, I think GM will come out with something that will compete to eventually, but they, they don't even have yep. that right now. I don't think it's priority right now for them, but we'll have to see. But let's talk about, while we're talking about Fords, let's talk about Jim Farley. This week, he admitted that full self-driving tech isn't coming anytime soon. Uh, they, uh, you know, p potentially you might see level three self-driving, but uh, and he's optimistic for level four, but profitable, fully autonomous vehicles, according to Jim Farley, uh, are a long way off, and, and we won't necessarily have to create the technology ourselves. Uh, well, they, they did invest been... in Argo AI along with um, along with Volkswagen, but that just closed up this week. Yep. Their engineers are going to go off uh, probably to Ford and to Volkswagen. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, we've been saying this for a long time, that, yeah. that fully autonomous is at least 2030 or so. Yeah. Uh, and it could get further out because of the, because of the economy, because of, you know, social changes, who knows, but. Well, let's face it. I mean, I think it's I'll, – I'll just take a look at – they're going through one major shift away from the internal combustion engine already. Mm -hmm. And it would be hard to do both of these at one time. There's just not the money there to invest in both of those technologies. And I think EV yep. is hard enough. Um, <laughs> and, I, you know, at least we know we can do that. Um, and getting spending the money to get people to adopt it, but 
you know, self-driving vehicles, it's kind of still being invented as, as we, you and I talked about often, it needs to be all remapped. There's uh, GPS yep. needs to be improved. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that have to happen and they're going to cost money and they're huge, huge projects. So I don't, it's, I agree. Yeah. I don't think it's, they're going to see it anytime soon. It's, I mean, it's going to happen, but it's going to happen slowly uh there's gonna have to be infrastructure involved um you just don't you know we've tested we we've been you know with the engineers uh in the past few years testing these uh but they're under very very rigid circumstances in perfect weather uh you know it's just not yet so no, it's not, it's not there yet, and a lot of technology has to happen. And the first place it will probably will see a change will be trucking industry, um, and then uh, probably like uh, car service, you know, taxi type of industry. Yeah. Uh, I also think these things will be super expensive. If electric cars are coming in around eighty-five to a hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> what are these going to cost? uh yeah i mean you know people are not going to say uh well you know what i won't ha i won't get that house i'll just buy this car for 300 <laughs> and, and live in the live in the car yeah yeah we'll get the van uh, no, get the transit you know, trail that way you can live in it you yeah know? <laughs> so uh and argo closed down two thousand people uh will be let go uh but some as you said will find work obviously you know, Ford and Volkswagen invested a lot in these folks, yeah. so they'll well, find work lot, there. Well, you know, BMW will hire some, and certainly Mercedes and Audi. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, you know, it's not going away. It's just not happening tomorrow. Right away. Yeah. Yeah. And anyone that tells you that or says that they have it right now, they don't yeah. have full self-driving. We will see the level go up and... Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, certainly Blue Cruise, I believe that that's level three, right? Oh, oh right. it is on the way, level three right now. So level two means you can take your hands off the wheel on right. certain you roads. For steering a certain assist, of time. braking, cruise control, um, driver monitoring, lots of stuff. Right. But not, but, not take yeah. a rest in the back seat or watch but, TV. You know, not... 24 hours a day uh, in the dark, in the rain. Um, no. All right. Well, as we love to jump around on this show, <laughs> uh, we're going to go from self-driving cars to manual transmissions. <laughs> now, why we not? We Why not? That We cover the whole industry. So uh, Mini, as we told you not that long ago on this show, Mini is bringing back the manual transmission to their lineup, and uh, it's kind of a celebration because the car obviously started with a manual transmission. Uh, but the problem is, take rates are low. Mini feels it's because a lot of people don't know how to drive it, a manual transmission, which is true, uh, and uh, that it's fallen by the wayside. So. The BMW Group Performance Center West will be the exclusive location for Mini Manual Driving School, where through a team of experienced instructors, the school will incorporate a classroom portion and hands-on driving experience at the on-site test track. And uh, they're going to teach people how to drive a manual. Now, this means the effectiveness as the... Uh, Theft deterrent will go down, won't it? <laughs> it will. Um, but I don't think the take rate is going to be huge on this. It's a lot of work. Let's face it. It's a lot of work on a, in an everyday, in a stop and go yeah. scenario, right? Well, very much. Um, you know, if I'm out doing errands and driving 30, 40 miles total, uh, I'm shifting my car. 150 times weirdly i'd like to take the course to see if they're going to tell me something different than i've been doing differently that it would be fun to do that i mean i know the car moves along it's smooth it, when i drive it it's smooth it doesn't jerk it 
doesn't stall. So I think that's okay. But maybe you always can pick something up, right? Well, theoretically. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, I can get in, like you, get in any manual and drive it. Yeah. And yeah. I can, you can too. I can shift up and down without the clutch. Yeah. Without clashing gears. Flo f you float them. Right. As, as opposed to grind them if you can't find them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> or grind them till you find them. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. I, one thing I would like to drive, though, is I would like to drive a tractor trailer with a 13 speed with a split rear and do it properly, you know? Boy, yeah. Ever that's, hear those no, guys, they go through the gears and go, boom. Ship, boom, ship, yeah. boom, uh, ship. Yeah, each one is about two miles an hour faster. Than... <laughs> and then somebody, like, stops in front of him, and he's like, oh, I yeah. got to go all through yeah. this again. Uh, Those are incredible. I They're disappearing from trucks, too, because, you know, it's a lot of work to shift it. You ever see the guys on YouTube that have the shift lever that's way up high, like it's, like, almost up in the sea? I don't know why you would want to do that. Um, I mean, it looks cool. I think they think it looks neat. <laughs> but it can't, you know, it's like it just, having a telephone pole for a shift lever, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it can't there's a little bit too much leverage. Yeah, a little bit too much leverage you might or the guy in the sleeper that's sleeping, he could shift for you while you while you drive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, anyway, uh, must that there you have it. We're learning learning about how to drive a manual. So when we come back, we're going to tell you about Dodge, and they're going to detail their new electric EV. They showed it off, another version of it at SEMA with beautiful fall right into that red paint. Man, that is cool stuff. Also bringing back the direct connection name. So stay tuned for Cruise Control. We will be right back. Cruise Control. And welcome back welcome. to Cruise Control. Oh, well, take yeah, it, Les. Welcome, Fred. <laughs> hey, you take it. <laughs> well, we promised before the break that we would uh, bring you up on Dodge and what they're doing. The Charger Daytona SRT concept yeah. is revealed at SEMA. This is the one that's red. Yeah, it looks much better in red than black, I think. I, I, I think. I don't like black for a car. It's yeah. just, I think it's the wrong color. But, but um, you know, the, the Daytona is, you, if you want a conventional Dodge, you know, Hellcat, whatever, you better start looking for one. <laughs> yeah, and you're going to, I think they put a locator site up for yeah. finding dealers, but it's not going to be cheap. It's not going to be cheap. It's not going to be very available. But, mm -hmm. but uh, nonetheless, uh, they showed this. This is, uh, they say, uh, future product hints. Although it's getting um, pretty production looking. It's getting, yeah. I mean, they're, they're going to make it. Um, and what do you think, Fred? Do you, well, it we've got a lot of I I as I say I like it in red I like the wheels yeah. black wheels Str with red you can't go wrong yep on, striker on, red um I'm still not quite sure I know they did the kind of the roof shape the long roof to get headroom for the rear passengers but something looks a little off in the it's a little out of proportion um, yeah um I'm sure at SEMA it, somebody will take the rear seat out, cut the roof, move it back, and have a longer rear deck. That's like a small yep. project for somebody. Else. Sure. That's a couple, <laughs> couple days project. Um, this is electric, of course. Only electric, although believe it or not, the Hurricane engine, the, the twin-turbo uh, six-cylinder, they said it will fit in the engine bay, which is weird hmm. for them to say that. But you get nine different modes of this. 
including uh, starting at a base trim of 455, which is a nice place to start. Then E stage one, 495, E stage two, 535, 400, you, you step up to the 440 kilowatt model. Right, that's 590, 590. in yeah. base. E stage one, 630, E stage two, 670 horsepower. <laughs> uh, stage one and two use a crystal key that plugs into the dash, sort of mu very much like the different keys for the Hellcat. You know, they had the valet key, which yeah. got the power back. And then you had the now, red key that opened it all just up. Just for those that don't know electric cars very well, while this, the, while stage two is 670 horsepower, which is below the Hellcat, if you put the two together and stood on the accelerators, uh, this is going to be long gone before the Hellcat oh, yeah. locks up the rear end. And don't worry, Les, because if 670 is somehow not for you, there is going to be an 800 volt banshee. <laughs> <laughs> now we probably have a thousand horsepower, I bet. Well, 800 volts. Uh, wow. Yeah, probably a th close to a thousand horsepower. That might cost forty thousand dollars. What do you think? <laughs> For the left door. <laughs> so uh, a lot of information there. Beautiful paint. That's one of the things, if you ever get yep. an opportunity to go to the SEMA show, I mean, it looks like you could look at this car and fall inside, and there's a whole metaverse inside the paint. It's so Yeah, these are, these are $50,000 paint jobs. People know how to spray some cars there, don't they? Mm, boy, they sure do. Yeah. Um, so let's – the companion to this, to go in both ways – Direct Connection, of course, was a name from the past. It's sort of their factory, in-house, hot, hot-to-go parts. Uh, they've come out with some new <laughs> crate engines, right? Uh, and it's just a huge number of crate engines. They have the, the Huracrate, which is the Hurricane. That is the six-cylinder, twin-turbocharged engine, the crate motor version of this. Uh, this engine is typically found in Jeeps, um, Grand Wagoneers, things like that. It's going to kind of spread out across the drivetrain. It fits in this new Charger, but they say they're not going to put it in there. Uh, but that starts a Huracrate engine, Cat 1 version, 420 horsepower. And the Cat 3 version will reach 550 horsepower. This is a crate engine with a... With a warranty. Imagine that. Hmm. Uh, one one of the sites, I believe it was Autoblog, said, what would you put this in? And they said about getting a Chrysler 300 and dropping this in there to even replace the Hemi. That would make sense. Yeah, imagine that. And you can get that for $6,000, the car. And I don't know if we know how much the price of this is, but I would venture a guess it might be more than six thousand dollars. It probably is more. Probably not much more than ten. But... Yeah. But uh, then, if you need more, they're still building the four twenty six supercharged Hemi. They have aluminum block models. Interesting. The valve cover on this one says fifteen hundred. They say it might go beyond eleven hundred horsepower. Maybe fifteen hundred. Is mm. imagine that. The supercharger alone on top of this is a three liter supercharger on top wow. of the three liters. That's that's like a big V6. <laughs> it's like a big V6. <laughs> Just blowing air into that engine. Man. Uh, the you can get a cast iron block or an aluminum block. There's endless variations on this thing. And this is the Heliphant. The uh, the and then, of course, then they have the Huracrate which is the six cylinder. So uh, the world of crate engines only is getting bigger. And this is from the folks at SEMA. There's so many variations on this thing. Uh, it would take forever. There's one that the one that makes 1100 horsepower uh, is fueled by E85 fuel. Which is actually fairly cheap. Fairly cheap. 
and uh, probably allows you to run a lot of timing and a lot of compression, I would imagine, right? Yes. Um, now, the mileage won't be very good, but then again, if you have, <laughs> you have <laughs> you're a, thousand thousand horse... <laughs> a thousand horsepower engine, yeah. you're like, mileage? Yes, I get some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, there you have it. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Let's talk tech. This is another thing to come out of uh, out of uh, SEMA, the first ever two piece connecting rod. So it no, made... I've I personally have owned several two piece connecting. <laughs> they rods. come out the side of the block, right? Yes, they were the result of over revving. But... Yeah, uh, or they uh, they like to create what they call a window in drag racing, a windowed yeah. block. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's known as lunching an engine lunching an engine yes um this basically has a joint right below the piston and the idea is this prevents piston slap and uh it's called it's called oh i'll just say it i'm not going to come in it's called the thunder rod <laughs> <laughs> uh you reading the comments on this article was very interesting oh, um yeah. And it basically gives makes the piston go into the cylinder at a better angle and will That's, allow a higher revving, they say. Uh, it has to work. Piston slap exists everywhere. And it's just the piston uh, getting out of energy. angle because, the, because it has a solid connecting rod, right? Yeah, that's right. And uh, even though the piston's swiveling on the pin... Um, it's not going straight uh, they, into the cylinder. Um, it's amazing the, how they go, you know, thousands of miles without damage, but they, they do wobble and slap. Well, they say it will uh, cause the, uh, the joint, cause the piston to drop faster and farther at a 90 degree crank angle, increasing dynamic compression by 25 to 30 percent. And creates more leverage uh, at the crankshaft, increases torque, and eliminates piston rock. That was a very, Again, fam very great, famous musician, Piston Rock. Great name, <laughs> great name for a band. Yeah, <laughs> Piston Rock. Yeah, the Thunder Rod. I I'm just not gonna, you know. I, I think this is a great engineering idea, but I don't think it's cost effective, except for very special engines. Well. Also, a good question. Someone said, how does that uh, joint get oil, oiled? Well, Will it get enough same oil? Way, same way the, the uh, wrist pin is getting oil. Yeah, I guess so. But now you're not just oiling a wrist pin, you're oiling a joint. Yeah. You know. But uh, hey, I'm sure that's something they can come up with. It's a great thing about the SEMA show in Las Vegas. I mean, it's like open your mind and, and what yep. what can you come up with? So when we come back, we're going to open our mind and actually tell you about a vehicle I drove at the wheel review of the 50 mile per gallon Sonata Hybrid. So stay tuned to Cruise Control. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. Fred Staub and Lex Jackson here. Uh, we've got another at-the-wheel review. We love to highlight great vehicles, and this is one of them, the 2022 Sonata Hybrid Limited. Uh, great vehicle. This was kind of a black-on-black, -black, kind of formal-looking um, and it is a 50 mile to the gallon vehicle. I took this on the highway and it literally, it is a pleasure. And when you don't have an electric car, but you still don't have to fill the fuel tank less, um, it, the mileage nice. is incredible for a big four door sedan, big trunk, comfortable, uh, comfortable seats, great interior with plenty of leg room, um, and the hybrid system, well, it just it just kind of lives in the background and, and does a great job. It's a two-liter direct injection four-cylinder engine. 
and then it's got the synchronous motor with 39 kilowatt motor 270 volt lithium ion polymer battery and no compromise uh, hybrid because uh, there's no loss of storage there's no um, you know loss of interior room uh, I think it's a good looking vehicle it's got that fastback style uh, it uh, of course because of that has sort of a short trunk but that's okay because it's deep under there on the inside very formal look a lot of um, kind of matte finish uh, stainless steel look trim along with a smattering of piano black um, and then black seats uh, easy to use shifter push button shifter drive neutral reverse and park you know these days you might get a shifter that's hard to operate uh, Hyundai always great with their controls easy to use dedicated buttons and knobs great displays real easy to use uh, it's had heated seats, heated uh, uh, steering wheel. Out back, plenty of room, good visibility, even with that kind of fast back. Not a lot for rear passengers. One USB plug-in, which is kind of meager. I would have liked to see more than that, but good leg room. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, a dark interior, a lot of um, black vinyl and bla black plastic and black leather, but, you know, formal. Uh, you can't get into the trunk without using the remote. There's no button, at least one that I found. And one negative is the arms are exposed, so you do lose some space. But the good news is there's a spare tire and jack. Hard to find these days. Um, Important. Yeah, the drivetrain was great, nicely packaged under the hood, um, and a wonderfully smooth hybrid drivetrain, you know, transitions between electric and gas were smooth you didn't even notice them start stop was smooth you didn't even notice them um, you know smart cruise would stop and go uh, all the safety features included 17 inch alloy wheels that have these little vortex generators on them to make them uh, more aerodynamic you actually will see some more subtle aero on this car as you move around the back there's a spoiler and that, too, has these little vortex generators on the back to make, make the air kind of just roll over that, uh, which is pretty cool. Out front, you got those light pipes that extend all the way back into the hood, which is kind of a cool feature. Um, I just really enjoyed this. Took it on the highway. Uh, never felt like there was, you know, roughness between moving between the electric and the, um, and the uh, gas uh versions of this uh, uh you know modes of it so it was it was good good that way comfortable car to drive you could certainly take a long trip in it super hot steering wheel heater <laughs> it was so hot i had to turn it <laughs> off at times 192 horsepower in this drivetrain total which doesn't sound like a lot but it does a good job of moving you around six speed automatic transmission i like that sometimes getting too many gears makes it shifty and uncomfortable this was not the case. Uh, as I said, very comfortable on the inside. Uh, let's look at some of the options we had. Well, you know, being a Hyundai, kind of everything comes with it. This is the Sonata Hybrid Limited model, so it's top of the range. Uh, and there were no options uh, other than, I, I take that back, $196 for the carpeted floor mats. Um, ah. The freight was a uh, thousand forty-five. So total price for this thirty-six thousand seven ninety, which is not bad at all. Very minimal things I'd like to see changed. I'd like to see uh, a remote trunk release on the outside. Maybe it was there. I looked everywhere. I didn't see it. And I'd like to see some more um, accoutrement for the rear seat passengers, other than just a single USB outlet, which was lit by the way, which was nice. Um, good storage in the back. Uh, I like that deep trunk. You will have to put up with kind of a short opening in there, but uh, it's not bad. You can put the rear seats down. There's remote releases. Um, and as I said, all important, spare tire. Please look if your vehicle has a spare tire or not. I was just talking with a colleague of mine who never really looked and found out he just had the inflator, and that's not the best time to find out that you just have the inflator uh overall five star safety rating on this vehicle which is great uh that is a great thing for them uh five stars for passenger 
side front seat and rear seat crash rollover and four stars for frontal for driver overall five star rating um, yeah and the official numbers of this are 45 city 51 highway 47 aggregate i um i got over 50 miles to the gallon on the highway and it was easy to do that without trying um, sad thing is i believe the sonata is going away i don't know if that's official or not yet um well it's a sedan it's a sedan uh it is a a great vehicle though you know you could cross compare this with the honda accord hybrid which i believe doesn't maybe it eases into 50 i'm not sure if it gets 50 and there's a new version of that coming out so who knows um but if you're looking for a vehicle that is going to burn very little gas i mean let, let's face it if you didn't have a hybrid system in order to get 40 miles a gallon, you'd need something the size of, a, let's say, a Toyota Corolla uh, if you wanted a non-hybrid version. This is a much bigger car. Uh, it has the hybrid system, and it's getting into the 50s for mileage, which I think is still pretty incredible to get 50 miles of travel out of a gallon of gas. You think about a paint can, uh, and uh, you're going to just burn that amount of fuel and go 50 miles, which is an incredible distance, isn't it? It really is. If you think about how, how the fuel is just trickling in. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that, that's a lot of distance. Uh, I mean, a hundred miles on two gallons of fuel and yeah, uh, that's, it, it's not that's faking it, it does get this mileage. So I would, I would give it a great rating. I think it's one to consider the price all in on the sticker is $36,000. You know, I, W will it sell for less than that now nowadays have have we seen a little softening in the market i think nowadays that's happening i've i have been following the prices of used cars and they're dropping they are definitely about dropping. 500 dollars a week <laughs> that's a nice trend i like that yeah call me back in a month and uh, it'll be two thousand less right yeah you know so uh good good vehicle and by the way it did look black the exterior but it is actually oxford blue believe it or hmm. not but it definitely looked black to me and it was a nice paint job super shiny uh you could see myself in the re reflection here so good quality uh on this um final assembly point is an and i don't know how you say this i guess asan uh korea and uh, country of origin for the engine is korea and transmission is korean as well um but uh, good vehicle, great, uh, great hybrid range. And uh, if you can break the mold and break out of the CUV, SUV mold, um, and you're okay with a sedan, uh, this is one to look at. Certainly, if you have to travel long distances, it's, it's the one to look at. Of course, gets the best warranty out there as well. Hey, it's time for me to say I'm Fred Staub. I'm Les Jackson. We are going to see you down the road. Bye.